Hi, my name is Dr. Gary Gorman. I'm a chiropractic physician with Trinity Health of New England in Agua, Massachusetts, and this is my daughter, Grace. Um, since we've all been sheltering at home, I've heard many people saying that they're spending way too much time sitting. And the past three or four years, there's been a buzz term, sitting is the new smoking, and they have found out that prolonged sitting and inactivity is as detrimental to us as smoking is. So with that said, we have come up with a series of exercises, low-tech exercises that you could do at home. They're easy and that you could do them virtually every day without spending any money to help us remain uh, stretched and flexible during these times of sitting. Now the disclaimer of this is simply listen to your brain and your body. If you have any pre-existing conditions that you cannot do one or more of these exercises, please don't do them. We want you to maintain safety first and we can adapt and you can adapt to the exercises that I'm showing you. Especially when we do some of the exercises that require you to stand, if you're on any kind of blood pressure medication, if you have any balance or dizziness conditions, please protect yourself by either not doing the exercise or by standing with support. So how I've broken it up is that we're going to do the exercises in the laying position, then we're going to do it the sitting position and the standing position. Now the laying position, you could do these before you even get out of bed in the morning. And I have a table here that's going to kind of pretend it's a bed. So make sure you get into the middle of the bed. And if you're sleeping with somebody, please make sure that you don't hit them by doing these simple little exercises. For those of you who have a lot of flexibility and who have been in good shape prior to doing these exercises and want to do them on the floor, feel free to do so, but you could do them on the bed if you have a difficult time going from laying to get, getting off the floor to the sitting and then the standing position. All right, so let us begin. Pretend you're waking up first thing in the morning, okay? So our first stretch, good morning, Grace. Good morning. <laughs> you just wanna do a simple little stretch by just bringing your arms overhead and you're going to reach with your fingers and then again with your toes, bringing your toes away from your nose. Now some of you may only be able to go to here. Don't, keep your arms up like this, honey. Don't force yourself because in time, just let the weight of your arms slowly start to drift down towards the mattress until you feel resistance and then stop. Hold this position for 10 or 15 seconds and then you could bring your arms back in front of you. The second exercise will simply be clasping your hands behind your neck and I'm just going to remove the pillow and you're just going to let your elbows start to migrate down towards the mattress. You're going to feel it stretching in the front of your chest here and it's called a pec stretch or chest stretch and you could do this again for 15 or 20 seconds. Just remember, you've been in one or two positions all night long, and so you will be stiffer and tighter in the morning, and it takes a little bit of time. So these are just really beginning to loosen you up so that you can become more active a little bit later. All right, let me give you the pillow again, Grace. There you go. Now you can bring your arms down and get into a comfortable position. The next stretch will be starting in the lower extremities. So we're going to bring our knees up, both knees, and you're going to just really bring your the soles of your feet together and you just slowly start to bring your knees down towards the mattress. Again, don't force it. Just let your legs, the weight of your legs, just drift down towards the mattress. Simple, easy, 10 or 15, 20 seconds, even 30 seconds. As long as you feel a little tension but not any pain. There's a fine line between hurting and harming. You may feel a little bit of soreness doing these or even the following day. You don't want to cross the line to harming yourself because that's an injury and we want to stop quite short of that. The next one, you could bring your knees back together and I call this one a hip roll. So you simply are going to let your legs fall to the side, holding it for 15, 20 seconds and you go down until you start to feel your back coming up off the mattress or off the floor and that's enough, you hold it there and just let the weight of your legs fall and you're gonna feel a stretching in your hip. 
Go back and you're going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm holding grace because the table is kind of thin or narrow. And do the same thing this way, 10 or 15 or 20 seconds. And you can do this back and forth two times in each direction. Okay. The next one will be a knee to chest exercise. And I like to do this one knee at a time. It's a little bit more, um, you have more security and more control over this. So you could either grasp behind your knee or if you don't have a knee problem and you're flexible, you could grasp in front of your knee. You're going to bring your knee up to your chest and you're going to feel this stretching in the back of your thigh here as well as into front of your hip on the other side. And you hold this again for 10 or 15 seconds. And then you could bring this gently towards the center, towards the middle of your, of your chest and hold it again for 10 or 15 seconds, gentle. Then you could bring this leg down and you do the opposite side. Knee to chest and then bring it to the center like this. And you could go back and forth and do this two times each, roughly 15 to 20 seconds each time. From here, what you can also do is you could do a hamstring stretch, which is the muscle in the back of your leg. So you could hold here and now just start to bring your foot up towards the ceiling. Gentle, just like that, okay? And then you may just be able to get it to here because you've been in a fetal position all night and the hamstring is super tight. So you just kind of do it gentle and easy. These are all warm-up stretches and bring it down and you could do the same thing on the opposite side, holding it for 10 or 15 seconds, just like that. Okay, that's beautiful. Alrighty. Now, the last one in this position is a bridging exercise, and this helps to strengthening some of the muscles of your, the buttocks area and of your legs. So what you're going to do here, you're simply going to lift your pelvis off the mattress and hold it. This may be too difficult for some people, so please don't do this. If you feel strong and you're in fairly good condition, hold it for five to seven seconds and bring it down. And then you can do it again. Five seconds, bring it down. And you can do that three or four times like that, nice and easy. Now the last exercise or position that I'm going to share with you is how to get out of bed properly so you don't injure yourself, especially first thing in the morning like this. So we do it in three phases. The first phase is we're going to roll over to our side, no matter what position you get to your side like this. And then what you do is you take this arm and you push yourself right up to a sitting position and swing your legs over the, over the bed. And now I want you to sit there for 10, 15 seconds and just shift your weight from side to side. I oftentimes use this with my patients who have back problems, especially low back problems, so they can transition from non-weight bearing to weight bearing in stages. Then you could slowly stand up and then you could pretend you're rocking a baby, shifting your weight from side to side, nice and easy, and do that for 10 or 15 seconds before you start moving. Okay. All right, so why don't we stop here for a second, take a break, and we're gonna prepare for doing some exercises in the sitting position. So the next series of exercises we're going to do are from the sitting position. And for all practical purposes, these are the ones that you're going to be doing the most during the course of your day. So we're going to start down in the legs and work our way up because the legs are really important to keep stretched and keep the muscles toned because they help pump your blood up to the heart. Remember, sitting is the new smoking. We have to keep moving along as much as we can during the course of their day. So our first exercise is going to be doing just heel ups. So we're going to be sitting down and we're going to bring our heels up and going up onto our toes. And we're going to do that slow and gently from five to 10 times. And these are, you're going to feel these in the back of your calves. You're going to be contracting these and you're going to be helping out your muscles, bringing blood back up to the heart. Okay. So after you do five to 10 of these, then what you could do is you could bring your leg out and put your, bring your heels out. And you're going to just bring your toes up towards your nose and you're going to feel it stretching in the back of the calf. And you bring your foot down and you could bring it back up. And you could do this anywhere from five to 10 times. And you could do these particular exercises multiple times during the course of the day. You will probably not overdo it. 
So after doing 10 of those, as you're sitting in your chair, then, you could, then what you can do is you could bring your knee up, you could straighten your knee and hold for five seconds, bringing it down and do the other leg, doing that for five seconds. And you could go back and forth doing this anywhere from five to 10 times. Beginners, I would start doing it five repetitions, doing it multiple times during the course of your day. Okay, that's perfect. All righty, so the next one we'll do, this is a little bit of a strengthening exercise. So what you're going to do is you're, you're gonna put your hands on your thighs and knees together. There you go. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to separate your knees and give yourself some resistance. So you're going to, your legs are going to be pushing against your hands and you're going to be feeling that on the outside of your thighs. And hold for five seconds and then relax. And then do it again, try to push out against your hands and try to have your hands try to push your knees together for five seconds. And you do five of those. Okay. And then we're going to do the opposite. After you do five of these repetitions, now we're going to take a pillow from your couch and you're just going to put it between your legs. And now you're going to squeeze your knees together, holding it for five seconds. Relax. Doing it again for five seconds. Relax. And you can do that and starting at five repetitions. Okay. All righty. After that, then we're going to start doing, we're going to do a similar exercise as you did laying down in bed, knee to chest stretch. So bring one knee up. You could either grasp, if you have a knee problem, you want to grasp underneath. If not, you could grasp over top, whatever is more convenient for you. And you bring it right up towards your chest and hold it for five seconds. And then what you could do is you cross your right ankle over top of your left knee and bring your knee to your opposite shoulder, holding it for five seconds. And then you could bring that leg down and you do the same thing to the opposite side. So knee to chest. Then, yep. And then you could cross your knee over and knee to your opposite shoulder. Yep, perfect, just like that. And you could bring that down and you could do that two or three times on each side, holding it for five to 10 seconds. One that Grace brought up, which I think is a great one, is marching in place. So why don't you just show how to do a little marching in place. And you could even do this for 20, 30 seconds while you're watching TV. Again, just because you're watching TV or reading a good book or on the computer, you can be doing other little simple exercises while you're doing your, the sitting or the inactive type of act, inactive activities. Okay, all right. So the last one, after we do this for 15, 20 seconds, will be a simple rotary stretch. So we're going to cross our arms over top of our chest, and we're going to slowly turn to the left. It's just as far as we go. Don't force it. Hold for 10 seconds or so. Come back to neutral. And then you're going to turn to the opposite side for another 10 seconds and just hold it. Come back, and you go back. Do this again to the opposite, go back to the left. And each time you do it, you may find you have a little bit more range of motion, but it's really not important to see how far you can go, but just consistently work on stretching the muscles that are short and tight. Okay. So that's it for the sitting exercises right for now. So we'll take a quick break and we're gonna show you how to do some exercises in the standing position. So now we're going to start showing you some exercises in the standing position. Um, and just for a little information, when people spend a long period of time sitting, two of their primary muscles of the legs become really short. The hamstring muscle becomes really short because you're sitting in this position here. And the hip flexor, the muscles that work when you climb stairs, become really short and tight. So we're going to show you how to stretch those particular muscles in three different positions. We're gonna first start off in the kneeling position for, the, for those of you who have any kind of knee problems, who have a difficult time getting on and off the floor, this is one that's not for you. But for those of you who can do this comfortably, you could put a pillow on the floor 
And you, what you can do is you kneel on that pillow. So in this case where Grace is, she has her left knee down on a pillow and her right knee is at 90 degrees. And what she's going to do, she's going to lunge forward slightly. And if you're doing it correctly, Grace will feel that in the front of her left thigh. And she's just going to hold that gently for 10 or 15 seconds like that. Simply feeling it in the thigh area right in here. And you're controlling your movement by the front knee and front leg for stability. Then we're going to switch sides, come back to neutral, and put your other leg up. And you want to do the same thing. You slightly just kind of put weight on your left leg and kind of lunge forward slightly. You're going to feel it in the front of the right thigh. Okay. And if you need to use a, a, a chair, the arm of a chair or a couch in your room, feel free to do so to balance yourself. Safety is the most important thing when you're doing these exercises. Okay, Grace, so why don't you stand up and show us how to do it in a standing position. So you bring one leg forward and you, st and you lunge forward. And again, Grace is going to be feeling this in her left thigh. For those of you at home, again, use the back of a chair, the arm of a chair. You could use a railing. You could use a countertop, something to give yourself some balance and stability holding it for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, or whatever you feel comfortable with. If you feel comfortable with five seconds to start, that's fine. And then you'll switch sides and do the same thing. And I would do two repetitions of this. So you could do right side for 10 or 15 seconds, left side for 10 or 15 seconds, right side, and then left side for 10 or 15 seconds. And again, as I had said in the sitting exercises, you could do these multiple times during the course of your day. The next one we can do, we're actually going to bring two muscles into this, two or more muscles. And this is the lunge, but it's going to be doing it with a stairway. So if you live in a home that you have stairs, you're going to, this, our step stool is going to be our stairs. So Grace, why don't you put your foot up on the, the second stair here, and you're going to hang on to the railing. Be very careful, and then you're going to lunge forward, and Grace is going to feel that in her left front of her left leg or thigh or hip and she's going to just hold that again gentle gentle stretch not going too far and then she comes back to a neutral position and what she can do now is she could put her heel on the stairway and she can and pretend that there's a pipe going right through your hips and she's going to slowly bend forward at the waist and she's going to feel that in the back of her thigh. This is the hamstring stretch. So you could do two separate stretches virtually in the same position. Okay, and come back. And then you do the opposite side. So she's gonna put her foot up. And if you wanna start off with the first stair, the lower stair, feel free to do so. It's all based on how comfortable you feel and how safe you feel doing these exercises. That's perfect, Grace, good job. And then you're going to come back and just put your heel up. And to really feel the hamstring, you could actually bring your toes up toward, you don't have to reach to your toes, but you just bring your toes up and you're going to bend slightly forward out the waist and you're going to feel this right in the back of your thigh. Okay, that's perfect. So now we're going to move on to the wall squats. And so what we're going to do is, if you, you just go to a wall, and actually if you want to shut a door, I find that the door is smoother and it's easier for you to glide up and down on a door that's not painted or has a, has a glossy paint to it versus some of the wall coverings that may stick your shirt to that a little bit. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to lean against the wall, heels about eight inches away from the wall, and you drop down about six inches and hold. And then you slide back up to your neutral position. Five, about five seconds and then come back up slide back up that's one slide down again not much more than six inches you're going to feel it in the front of your thighs slide up that's two and you could do five to ten of these to start and as you become stronger what you can do is you could just do more sets of these so say you start off with five and after a week you work your way up to ten that's great. The next time you could do, start to do two sets of 10 and giving yourself a little bit of a break or a rest period in between your sets. So this is one you're going to really start to feel 
um, with, your, with your muscles of the front of the legs. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some exercises that I'm going to show you how to do in the kitchen. I'm going to run out of here and bring my prop up. Sorry, guys. Grace, stay right where you are. <laughs> okay. So pretend this is your kitchen counter right here. So you're going to lean on the counter. And what you're going to do is you're going to give yourself some really good balance. And you're going to bring your right leg to the side and just bring it up and, and down. One. Up and down. Two. Slow and steady. All these exercises want to be slow and steady. You, the slower you go, the more efficient your muscle strengthening will become. And you could do maybe five to ten of those to start. Again, as you become more proficient, you become stronger and more flexible, you could increase the number of repetitions or the number of sets. Repetitions means that's a repetition. One. Then you switch sides and do the other side. One, two, and you balance is crucial and very, very important. So you want to make sure that you are hanging on to the countertop, onto a chair, something, so you don't lose your balance. And the height is not important. Grace is very young, very athletic, very flexible. Just go up a couple inches, honey. That's, that's plenty. If you only could go up three or four inches, that's a great place to start. It's all up to how how much you can do and being safe about it. And you do maybe 10 of those. So those are going to bring, those are going to strengthen the muscles of the sides of the hips here. The next one we're going to do are the mule kicks. Is that what you call them, Gracie, the mule kicks? Donkey kicks. Donkey kicks. Okay, so we're going to do the donkey kicks now. So you know what we may want to do is to show you, we're going, you're going, to, you're going to lean against the counter, and Grace is going to show you how to do a donkey kick. One, two, and if you have to, what you can do for beginners, you could bring your foot down after each one. So then bring, kick your leg back and bring your, then go down. And you could do five to 10 on one side and then you could stop and then you could do, reverse it and do five to 10 on the other side. So if you can do the donkey kick, the way Grace is showing you, that's great. But if you have to stop after each one or each repetition and put your foot down for a little balance, that's fine as well too. And you don't want to overextend or hyperextend because you don't want to hurt your low back here. So you want to just bring it up till you start to feel it in, your, in the big butt muscle. Okay. Okay. So, so what we're going to do now, um, we're going to have a couple more exercises for you. We're going to do some arm curls. And Gracie, why don't you start off and see, you don't need any high tech weights here. These are cans of soup. Okay. <clears throat> and you could slowly increase the weight of what you're holding as long as you can hold them safely and don't drop them on your toes, all right? So start off with one uh, can and you're gonna do arm curls. You're gonna feel that in the front. One. Slowly up and slowly down. This is, in technical terms, this is concentric. We're contracting, eccentric, elongating the muscle in the front of your arm. Slow up, slow down. All exercise should be very slow and you should think about it. That's the most efficient way to strengthen muscles physiologically. So those are going to work on the muscles of the front of the arms. Okay, and you could even do these in the sitting position. If you have difficult time standing or if you have a walker, you could sit in your chair and do these arm curl exercises as well. And you could do one at a time. So Gracie, why don't you go with your right arm first, up and down, and do the left arm. You could alternate back and forth. That's perfectly well to do that. That's a legitimate way to do it. If you want to do one at a time, we're okay with that. Now I'm going to show you how to do a couple simple little exercises for your shoulder muscles. Now for any of you who have any shoulder injuries, shoulder surgeries, be very careful of this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stand with our, our hand out in front of us like this and we're going to slowly just bring our arm up straight up in front 
Now, this is Grace is young and athletic, as I said before. You may only be able to come to here, which is fine. One and down and do the other arm and down. And you could alternate back and forth that way. Do maybe five to ten of those. And you're going to feel that in the front of the shoulder here. Yep. And that's great. And as you become stronger, you'll be able to get up. If you find that even using a soup can is too much for you, simply just use your arm. One and two. And when, that, when you're doing too many repetitions of that because it's too easy, then you could hold the soup cans and cut down on the number of times you do it for each set. So starting off, if you get just your arms doing 10, then you could stop and you could use the soup cans and maybe start off with five on each side. From here, you could come to the side. Again, this is very difficult. Not difficult, but for some people it may be. So start off and you may only be able to come to here and one and do the other side and down two and you alternate back and forth and you could do up to five to ten of those to start again we want to increase either the number of times we do it or the weight I suggest it first now these are all exercises that I'm showing you just to get the basic idea hopefully in the near future we will have a class that we could get together and take a group of these exercises and put them together for a regular workout that you could join me on. Um, but right for now, I just wanted to give you some of the basics to do this. So the last one that we're going to do um, is we're going to show you how to do a, a chest stretch. And we're going to do that either in the corner of the room or in a doorway. Um, I've had patients that would say, Dr. Gorman, I couldn't do this exercise because I didn't have any corner of the rooms that didn't have furniture in it. So I would kindly and nicely walk over to the door, open up the door and say, now, do you have a door in your house? And they would smile and laugh and say, you could do this exercise perfectly as well in the doorway as you can in the corner of the room. So we're going to come over here and we're going to stand in the corner of the room. This is a very important exercise for you because we spend a lot of our time in what's called a flexor dominant position. Does this look familiar to a lot of you? You're either working on a jigsaw puzzle, you're working on your computer, you're, you're making masks for the first responders, you're, you're, do, you're reading in a good book, you're spending a lot of time on the computer. Everything is rolling forward. These muscles in the front of your chest are getting really short and tight. And we want to have, then we're going to start having some difficult time breathing. So what we want to do is we want to open that up. So I'm going to show you how to do a couple stretches in a couple different positions. Gently, if you have shoulder problems, you don't want to force this. So the position that you get into, you come into the corner of a room where you have good stability and balance. As Grace is showing you here, she has her elbows, her arms are roughly parallel with the floor. She's looking straight ahead, and all she's doing is she's letting her body weight gently fall forward so that you can actually see she's feeling the stretch in the front of her shoulders right in here, okay? Holding it gently for 10 or 15 seconds, and you want to make sure you're not putting too much weight on this, sim, so you want to keep your low back straight. From there, you come back. Rest for a second, and then you could repeat that. You want to keep your head up neutral. You don't want to be looking down with your chin on your chest, and you're going to feel it stretching and opening up the chest in the front here. Now, for advanced stretch, you could bring your arms up high like this, and you could bring one foot in front of the other a little bit for balance, and you could do the same exact thing. You slowly just let your body weight, you're not doing a push-up, you're just letting your body weight simply come forward feeling the stretches of the muscles 10 or 15 seconds and do that two or three times like that okay so these are a series of exercises that I showed you today and you could mix or match them you could actually do some of the standing ones sitting you could do some of the sitting ones laying down whatever works for you in your situation and your level of conditioning to start. These exercises you could pretty much do 
on a daily basis or at least every other day. Now, I want to give you a couple hints to do for those of you who spend a lot of time sitting, as I said, either on the computer, watching TV, sitting working on a jigsaw puzzle, making masks you know, for the first responders for the COVID-19 at your, at your sewing machine. You want to set an electronic timer away from you so every half an hour to 45 minutes it goes off, forcing you to get up and move around and shut the timer off and take a little bit of a break. We need to change positions as often and as frequently as we possibly can. Now, what you also want to be careful of is that um, after sitting for too long watching TV, my response to my patients and my solution to my patients are simply at every commercial, get up and walk around a little bit. Even if you walk around your dining room, walk around your apartment, walk back and forth, get up and move around. And then when you are sitting and watching the show, do what Grace showed you before of marching in place to keep moving. So I hope this was beneficial to you. I wanna thank Grace for helping me out with this. That was awesome. And hopefully we get back and we can do an exercise class together in the near future.